Oh my gosh. Oh, it's melted. Oh, it's it's stuck to the shelf. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that sweet little face. Welcome to Bug Week. I have seven bug molds here. Let's pour them up and open them to see what's inside and decorate them. Hello, my name is Shelby and I'm a potter. I found this bulk lot of slip casting molds and one by one I'm pouring them up to reveal whatever is inside and then finish it into an artwork. This is the mystery mold series. So let's see what's in today's episode. Because there are so many molds this week, I actually thought I would break up the openings and decorate each one at a time. So the reveals are kind of spaced out in this video. So let me know if you enjoyed this format or maybe the anticipation ruined it for you because you just want to see them all at once. Let me know below. I just thought it would be fun to try something new. This is the biggest one. I was just saved it for last. Oh my gosh, I love it so much. It's a snail. Ah. <laughs> Look at that beauty. Oh my goodness, it is gorgeous. We've got like the beautiful snail slug. <laughs> snail slug like shape. But we've got this beautiful conch shell shape and it's got a lot of texture on it still. It's so sculptural and lovely. I, I love it. It's gorgeous. Oh, we've got a snail. I've always wanted a snail. This is perfect for the garden. Oh, oh my gosh. I could turn it into the snail from Turbo. <laughs> I love that movie. I just love how they let a snail race with like these big cars. <laughs> like, yeah, let's just let a snail into this car race. I feel like you could do a lot with this piece. In particular, I'm thinking the shell could be shaped like other things. Like it almost is giving cinnamon bun scroll. It also kind of looks like those swirly candies. I feel like I could do a variety of different food shells, but I also kind of really love this idea about filling up this base and then cutting out a hole and turning this into a vase or a pot plant. I really like it. Oh, we're off to a good start with this guy. I'm excited to see what the rest of the molds are. This snail is one of my favorite pieces I've found. As for artistic expression, I don't know how far I could take it into my own realm of creativity, but I did want to really take advantage of the hollowness of the shell by turning it into a pot plant or even like a brush holder. So what I did was I cut out a hole at the top. We've also been like slicing the top of the shell off as well, which was a lot easier of a method than using a hole cutter. But using the cutout piece to then fill up the pouring spout hole at the bottom, that's open and then I cut a little drainage hole in it as well but for a brush hole you don't need the drainage hole and then I decided to turn this guy into turbo I had so many ideas I was talking about turning one into a cinnamon scroll and I also thought it would be really fun to just do my traditional style of adding lots of flowers to it but I just thought you know what let's go for turbo because I won't get another chance to do turbo again and it's one of my favorite cartoon movies it's just about an underdog story of a snail accomplishing against all odds it's a win in a Grand Prix. <laughs> <laughs> Turbo is orange with a blue shell. Well, this is the shell after they become a race car driver, but I thought it would be cool to do one where you have the shell where he's sort of like cosplaying dressing up as a race car driver because it was like quite a brown fawny tone. But you'll see in a minute that I actually got a bunch of specialty glazes from Chrysanthos that I wanted to try on the shell, which I think will give that effect in, on the shell. For this one, I was a little bit scared with the white. It went on really watery for that first coat and it looks like it's enough, but with that coat, bought blue behind it I probably should have just left that not blue so that when I added the white you wouldn't have the blue coming through and you'll know why I'm mentioning that now when you see the kiln reveal you know why with the shell I also wanted to play around with the texture of it because it's got this beautiful texture I wanted some glazes to sort of pull in it and to have a play with some funky stuff now I don't know whether these glazes will work because these are new from Chrysanthos they're the supernova glazes and they kind of crystallize and become really intense apparently so I'm adding two colors I don't even know if they mix but I'm mixing them so I've mixed them on the shell. I'm hoping that they'll kind of pull in the crevices, but also give that crystalline look and sort of bring it to like a gemstone aesthetic on the shell. I'm really curious. I'm going in blind and the bottle also says that it will run. So I'm scared that I've put it in a bad position in the kiln and that it's going to run all over the shelf, but we'll see. I'm going to pop these in the kiln at the end and you'll see the finished results of each bug at the end of the video. Oh my gosh, look at that sweet little face. Oh wow. <laughs> With 
got a cute little beetle. Actual wings of the beetle are so, so cute. They've got a bit of like a wood grainy texture. I think that this is quite ornamental. Like it just feels like it belongs in a pot plant or in a garden bed somewhere nice. It's pretty paperweighty. You know what it could be used for, this guy in particular, because it's so flat and like heavy, is one of those sewing weights. Like when you've got the fabric, you're trying to hold the sewing the sewing the fabric down it feels like one of those but otherwise i think it's just cute as an ornament and also oh my gosh <laughs> you look at it like that it looks like a little butt <laughs> these look like they're all part of the same series of bugs so they're probably going to have a similar cartoon look it's not too strange and the eyes are just the right size everything in proportion to each other is really nice classic shape and size it's very playful but it could also lead into a really realistic or fun way of decorating which i really love when molds do that so here we have another butt <laughs> <laughs> I mean a bug and it's a beetle and I, I don't know why I painted it pink as well I think I, the more you look at it and like when you don't look at it from front on and you look at it from behind oh my gosh I keep making butt jokes but it, it looks like a butt and I painted it pink I kind of did these like sketches on my iPad for the bugs and I'm not going to show you them because it's they're kind of on a compilation edit and I don't want to spoil what the next bugs are in the video but I did these sketches of a love heart bug because I kind of unintentionally made a love bug and I kind of like this idea of like the red cobalt blue and pink together like they just feel like a really nice trendy color combo and I just wanted to utilize that color combo like that's the only inspiration behind this design was love bug and I just wanted to use these three colors together and see how it turned out I'm pretty happy with it so far but we'll see how it looks like in the kiln Oh my gosh, I think it's an ant having a rest. We've got this little ant, but it looks like it's taking a minute to have a little snack. It's having a little mouse moment. This one in particular, the way I can see it's gonna sit, I'm kind of glad that it's leaning forward a little bit because this is quite dense and what can happen sometimes is they can be misweighted. I, like the proportion of the weight of it can actually make it fall over in the kiln. Like we've got a few ones like that, like the Cupid dolls in particular, because the head is so big compared to the narrow little body, the head can actually like make, <laughs> make it fall over. Whereas this one kind of counteracts itself with this sort of like booty. The booty hanging out helps the weight proportion a little bit better so I think this one's going to be fine the kiln it'll just be a matter of making sure that it's nice and flat so it doesn't fall over yeah that one's going to be fine because the legs kind of hanging out too it kind of gives it a little bit more of a stand parking it's booty. I don't know what's sitting on I think it's just sitting on its own that's not its bum what is it sitting on I thought it was it looks like it's sitting on its own bum but it also looks like a haystack I have come to the conclusion that this ant is sitting on its own booty after I painted it I realized that it was all just sections of the ant bum and I think that that's so cool to utilize your own butt oh my gosh I'm talking about butts again it's the theme of this video butts but I love the idea of sitting on your own butt <laughs> what why you already sit on your own butt but using your butt to like rest against not just like sitting on it but like yeah anyway <laughs> um I painted this one nice blue colors and I sort of did it as a repeating pattern rather than individual patterns on each one you'll see what I mean by that later because I do one where I sort of do a different pattern in each one and then to make sure that the legs stood out I did them different tones and colors of blue so that they didn't just blend in with the patches behind them so part of it's just trying to make it all like a consistent color palette but also having the features stand out because otherwise it might look a bit muddy and you won't be able to tell what's what I think that that was half my issue when I was pulling them out was I couldn't quite make out where the body parts started and ended so that's been a big challenge of these bugs so far especially this ant but here is what it looks like before glazing and we'll come back at the end for the kiln oh my gosh we've got a little mantis but what is that on its face it looks like a little french mustache it's like wee wee <laughs> oh this guy looks really fun they look like they are about to have the best fun frolicking around in the garden the smile is so sweet and cute and it's kind of like looking up like oh, 
I'm really excited for this whole bug series to come together because these are all gorgeous. They're such gorgeous pieces. That little mustache, I'm pretty sure it's just like the little like antennae, but I love that they've kind of made it like a feature. Like it's a mustache. It's very cute and sweet. I also kind of like the idea of doing these colors that they're not typically in the wild. Like I'm thinking about maybe not doing this one so green, but maybe playing into pinks and purples and maybe adding some patterning onto the pieces, almost like how butterflies fly wings are like on each of these and just really playing with some kitschy patterns and making them look really goofy and fun. I love how I went on about not doing it green and I'm doing it green. <laughs> I just thought it would look really cool green and I, I just wanted to do it green okay. I really like the color green and I've already done some other colors and I just thought I'll just add some sort of butterfly type patterns on the piece itself. The other issue is that it has legs. It has so many legs, so many sword legs everywhere and I was really like oh I don't know how to paint this and make it look like the legs exist on there and so that they're not muddy similar to the ant so I just decided to do lots of different shades of green <laughs> really typical but I did add some pink splots onto it some little zigzaggies and some little hearts as well to make it really stand out and pop but I think the mission for this one was to just get through and to bring it to life because yeah there's just like lots of legs everywhere and it was a little bit daunting I added that little moustache and I just <laughs> thought it was so cool I love how it looks. It's so fun. But yeah, this is probably my least favorite bug, to be honest. It's very angular and very intense, but it's a sweetie. So I had to give it the love that it deserved, even though it might not be my favorite. I couldn't make out what this mantis was standing on for a really long time. And then once I'd sort of finished painting the main part of the mantis, I realized it was actually a leaf. So I decided to do the leaf a yellow orangey tone, like an autumn leaf, because I didn't want to do green because then it would just like bleed into it. And then there was be no contrast on the piece itself and sort of just look a bit meh. So I did a yellow orange leaf. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's a little bee. Kind of like, is it saluting? This one's shape is a little bit concerning to me only because it looks like it's going to be so tricky to balance that in the kiln. Uh, such a small base on the bottom with such a large <laughs> head but then the wing detail I think might actually balance it out as it stands but yeah it could be it could be a bit risky for it to topple over like so like it could we'll just see how we go we might need to pour it a little bit thinner even what are you doing it looks like the bee's kind of being a bit bashful because it's got like the there's two of the little legs and they're kind of going like this and then the other one's like tucked in like this, like it's scared or something. It's so cute. Cute little eyes, lots of fairy bee texture, just like you want to cuddle it. I think it could be fun to play around with some different colors on it. Even get some kind of like flickering whimsical glaze on here. I keep using whimsical, some flickering iridescent glaze on the wing to sort of give it a bit of sparkle and shine. But otherwise I think we could just lean into the bee colors and see what comes out of it. This series is really cute. Like it's nothing really awful about it. Like nothing really for me to report other than that the cartoon nature of these leans itself well to making them look really realistic, but also leaning into the cartoon playfulness of them like they are in their own little tv show i actually looked at the mold and it actually is called the bashful bee so it makes so much sense that i said that it was bashful a uh, very good very good design because i guessed it for the bee i'm actually doing it some oranges and yellows and sort of leaning into the yellow bee and now i was going to do a blue banded bee but these ones are already at the pottage and someone already did one and i didn't i didn't want to steal their idea okay so i decided to lean into this sort of like honey toned bee i didn't want to add black because i've already kind of leaned into these fully colorful artworks and i think that because it's shaped like a bee you get that it's a bee it doesn't need the black or brown stripes so i've done them all inspired by the colors and tones of honey and adding some little patterns now this is the only one this week that i've added flowers to you'll be so shocked i only added flowers to this one because it made sense because they're the pollinators <laughs> it looks like a caterpillar oh my gosh what a wormy little guy actually that face that face doesn't look like a caterpillar it kind of looks like a grub even. Is it a witchy grub? Could we put a witch's hat on this guy? I don't know. Oh, those eyes are so cute. 
I love it. It's giving hungry caterpillar vibes. It could be a caterpillar. It could be a worm. It could be a grub. I feel like it's a bit of a shape shifter and depending how you paint it, you can make it look like anything or not anything. Just one of those three options. <laughs> look at the little mouth. Oh my gosh, it's definitely going to have a really nice munch on something it shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, it's making me think it's more of a grub, but I love it. This one is our Wacky Worm. I'm doing sort of circus-inspired colors and patterns on each one of these lumps. And I think we worked out in the studio that this is a wood grub, and it's like one of the grubs that eats wood hence why it's called a wood grub <laughs> and I do really still like the idea I after I sort of poured it and I'm looking back at the footage and I was talking about a witchetty grub and I'm kind of sad I didn't do that in the end because I've talked about doing a witchetty grub for so long but I just really was called to this idea of like a rainbow caterpillar worm where all the different colors were different and it kind of pays homage to the hungry caterpillar but also yeah just a circusy aspect and playing into patterns and I don't know, just being been real wacky and kooky with this design just added all these different patterns onto them and then laid them all but keeping within the color palette so when I added a pattern I didn't add a new color that wasn't already on the main body of the caterpillar worm I need to keep consistent with what I'm calling this thing but yeah this is probably my favorite design wise it was just really groovy and funky and it was just such a fun joyful little critter I really enjoyed it and I think it's gonna look cool once it comes out of the kill and it's all glossy and vibrant. Oh, oh my gosh, it's a little caterpillar and it's standing upright and it's got the cutest little smile. The little nose almost looks like a love heart. It's got lots of cute little spots on it. I love it so much. I love that it's kind of giving the caterpillar out of Alice in Wonderland, but it's also giving Hungry Caterpillar and just like a goofy character. I think I need to look up different caterpillars and maybe pay homage to each caterpillar character that I've seen in pop culture. What an absolute delight. As for other purposes, I definitely think you could do <laughs> an incense holder. I always say that, an incense holder because of how upright it is. You could put one right in its head. I am really happy with this and I think that this one's going to be a favorite of mine. It, it just couldn't be better. The whole face, the smile, it's so goofy and sweet. So I was going to do Hungry Little Caterpillar, but we actually did one for a display at my Paint Your Own Pottery Place. So I wanted to do another character and I decided to do the Alice in Wonderland Absalom. So the little stoner caterpillar and it's quite simple of a design really it was only really three colors and then adding the eyes and something that I noticed about all the images of Absalom is they vary so so much but something that kind of stays consistent is the sort of sleepy dopey eyes with the eyelids sort of down so I decided to actually paint the eyes in full because you can layer under glazes so well I thought that this was the best approach to getting that very perfect circle underneath the eyelid it's a bit of a cheats way but I've got to admit that when I added the eyebrows I don't usually add eyebrows it was looking very very menacing to start with but the favorite touch I loved on this one was adding those eyelashes right at the end they just brought the whole look together and now it's time to glaze them and pop them in the kiln I really don't like how thick that was I think it's gonna be okay but I'll just water it down now that's better I pop them all in the kiln and here is the finished results. All right, it is time to open the kiln. We've got our little bugs in there. The only thing that didn't get in the kiln in time was actually my fantasy glazed snail up here. I actually painted it today, <laughs> which I, I just totally forgot about it and time was running out and the light was disappearing. Like it's disappearing now because it's getting dark and we've got shorter hours because we're in winter. So yeah, I, I missed out, but that one's going in tonight. So that'll be a separate reveal after this one. It'll go straight after this opening, but I've got all the other ones in there. So let's open it up and see the finished results. I, I think that they're gonna look cool. Adding the little patterns on each sort of section of the bugs, I think will look really awesome, but we'll just see. I'm also scared that the glaze might be a little bit thick on that mantis, but eh, eh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. They look okay. I think they look good. I want to see a little bit closer because they're right down the bottom. I'm already a bit disappointed in the coating on my turbos now. Uh, I thought I'd done enough coats of that white, but I can see from here it's really patchy already. I, I think it's still going to look cute. I think I'm being hard on myself. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that is ridiculous. I think the glaze looks okay. It looks a little thick. Ah, it's a bit cloudy. It happens. It's perfectly fine. But for me, I just would have liked it a bit crispier, less bubbles in it. I mean, it's not that bubbly. It could be worse. How I watered that down and it's still not quite right. The little face is cute. I think it's good. It definitely is awesome. I think I'm just being hard on myself and being critical and nitpicking the flaws in it. But I think it's still pretty cute. <laughs> It's so funny. Who's next? Do our mantis, because that was thick. Actually, it's it's okay. It looks pretty good. It doesn't look that bad. Like it is a bit bubbly, but I expected it to be worse after the results of that snail. I like the colors and the patterning. I think it's definitely brought it to life. Yeah, I feel like I could have gone a little bit more wild with the color choices because I feel like that would have made it more kooky and wacky like some of the other bugs. Like the other bugs look way cooler than this because they're random colors, whereas this one's more traditional of what it would look like in the wild. A little ant. Oh my gosh, look at it. Look at it. I love the spots and the dots. They're so cute. Oh, it looks so coy. I love the little face. I love that you can see the legs. I was worried that they would blend in a little bit and that you wouldn't be able to differentiate them from the body, but you can definitely see that they're, those are arms. A bumble. Oh, cute. But I love these daisies. They're so subtle. Like they're, they, they contrast enough, but like they're subtle that they blend into the yellow a little bit and you can see that there's a pattern. I love all the sweet patternings. They kind of complement the little bubbles of each, <laughs> the little bubbles, the booty of every part of this. The one thing I will say is that I definitely think that it could be aided with a bit of like luster on this wing to give it a bit of like translucency. The reason I didn't add like a funky opal glaze to this is so that I can take this as a display piece of the pottage and I don't want to give people unrealistic expectations of what they can achieve at that space because we don't have fancy glazes we just have the under glazes and yeah I wouldn't be able to control how they were applying that type of glaze so I haven't put that on there but I definitely think a luster could look really cool on that wing. I definitely think I should add that just to give it that like iridescentness. Let's do our caterpillar our tiny little caterpillar. Oh Oh, what a dopey, sleepy little guy. I love it. That is cute. A dopey, sleepy little critter. I really like it. It's just a, a little bit of a bummer about that thicker glaze. Like you can see it sort of pooling in those ridges. It just would have been so much nicer. See how down here it's a lot crispier? I don't know. It's probably hard to read on the camera, but it's really crispy down here, but it's a little bit cloudy up the top where it's gone into the glaze a bit deeper. Uh, it just hasn't been mixed well, but that's all right. I don't win them all with the glazes. I try my best, but I love, I love it. A little love bug, unintentional love bug. <laughs> it kind of has a bit of an American flag vibe. I didn't mean that, but yeah, the color just would have been that much better if the glaze wasn't that thick. Oh, but it's it's cute. I think it looks good on the camera still. I think I'm just being hypercritical. Gonna be really good references for people now because they'll be able to see what they need to look like and where they come to life because I think that's half the challenge with the bug pieces at the pottage is it's just really hard to see. Like this one in particular is fine and you can do so many details on these wings but I think the other pieces are really hard to read and they're quite muddy until you get the color on them. They make more sense. Oh, stop it. I love those colors. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, you are a cute. Oh my gosh. I just wish that glaze was a bit crispier, but it looks so good. It looks so good regardless. I love these. It just feels like a clown or a circus. A circus worm. Oh, it's so it's so fun. I couldn't have dreamed this up better. Uh, there is someone that has painted this piece at the pottage that I really loved. I'll put a picture, but they did it like cartoony and I was almost going to do this style, but I was decided not to because this person had done it. But I think that this, this is just so cool and it's kind of like they're friends, I feel. I can't stop looking at all the patterns and the cuteness. Okay, I'm going to pull this shelf out and the snail is under there and I'm very, very scared. It has melted and stuck to the shelf beneath. Let's do this together. Oh, oh, it's it's stuck to the shelf. I mean, it's melted. It's not very what I was hoping for either. Hopefully it will come off. Okay, so it's dripped off a little bit. I'm just gonna try and pull it off. I think it will come off with the kiln wash, but hopefully it hasn't stuck to the shelf totally. Oh, it came off. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
That is not good. You can see where it left a mark on the kiln shelf. And that's why you wash your shelves, people. It's left some of the pottery on there too. That is all kiln wash. But the shell, it actually looks like, now that I've gotten it out, it kind of really looks like a snail shell. I just need to process what just happened there and then I can properly react to the snail. I had a feeling it was going to do that and I was going to put it on a half shelf so I could sacrifice that, but I think that that will peel off. I'm confident that will peel off. I hope it'll peel off. I just wanted to show this for those at home that have never seen what happens when glaze melts. This is what happens and I will use a Dremel to get this off. So it looks like it's only on the kiln wash. I think it might just need a little bit of a grind off and then I'll just reapply the kiln wash and it should be fine. <laughs> That was risky. I should have just put it on the half shelf in the end, but. So here are all the finished results up close and personal for you to have a good look at. I am very happy with my turbo snail. The only thing is I don't have the little spoiler on the back. Maybe I need to make one out of cardboard. I didn't even think of it. I just thought it was a snail and then I was looking just like the snail shell, but then I was looking at the pictures and I was like, oh, I forgot the spoiler, but that's okay. It's not super aerodynamic, but that's fine. It's just for plants anyway. Here is a before shot of that glaze piece. Now this one is really earthy. I really love the tones and the colors. I just wish I added maybe another coat. I did four really thick coats. The glaze said four thick coats. The fact that it did run off though, I'm just not sure how I would fire it again in future to stop it from tacking on. I know that you can make like a little platform for it to sit on, but yeah, I'm not really sure. It did sort of crystallize a little bit, but I wish it sort of did more. I was kind of expecting a little bit more crystallization, but it's still really cool and I think it complements the shell really well. Well. It looks so realistic actually when you look at it up close. I love this color palette for the little beetle. There is so much you could do with this. I feel like I should have probably gone a little bit more detail on the wings and sort of played into the beetleness of it rather than the pattern, but I was trying to make them all this pretty collection and do some really simple patterns that would inspire people at the pottage as well. The little bee is a real sweetie as well. I love how all the honey tones come together. I don't think it really needed the black in the end as I was talking about it definitely needs a bit of iridescent glaze on the wings just to really complement them and make them feel a little bit more whimsical but otherwise I really really like it the mantis is probably my least favorite and I don't know maybe it's just because it's so sharp and sword looking it also was the thickest of the glaze and it's a little bit cloudy to the untrained eye you can't really tell but for me I could just see that the glaze could be a lot crispier it could be a lot more vibrant and pop against the piece my little worm is definitely in my top two I think I, I think it might actually be my favorite this week it looks really cool I love the circusy colors the sweet little eyes worked out so well for the little caterpillar I definitely love how this one turned out as well I've just got a love this week and not really much else to say other than I missed an opportunity to turn this into an incense holder and having this little caterpillar holding an incense like it was Absalom out of the Alice in Wonderland story would have just made this piece more excellent than what it already is so I definitely think that that's a project to work on in the future. The ant was probably my biggest surprise is that I really fell in love with this character. It's really sweet. The blue pattern repeating was actually really simple but brought it to life so well. But yeah, I'm, I'm pretty wrapped with these pieces. They're definitely not my favorites but once they were all together, they definitely look like they belonged on a cartoon TV show that I would tune in and they all have their own little personality quirks. But yeah, I'd love to know what you thought of this week, especially what you thought of the format this week, having the reveal then the decoration straight afterwards with multiple molds let me know in the comments what you think and here is a sneak peek for next week don't forget to like and subscribe for more